Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop, Part 15, cleaning and repairing the steam fittings. But before I show that, I thought it would be good to have a look at this. This is a big boy, and it really is a big boy. From a model point of view, it's colossal. This beautiful piece of engineering has a wheel arrangement which is 4884. The real thing was absolutely gigantic, the biggest steam locomotive in the world ever. And this model is very well detailed. Here's a close-up, it's slightly magnified, but look at the detail on the front of it. The sheer physical size and weight of the model is, to use an American phrase, awesome. It's difficult to photograph really because it's so big and in the area where it's sat I can't get the camera far enough back. In an attempt to get one shot of the entire engine I had to stand right over the other side of the room in a corner. This engine is not for sale, it's one of Simon's personal collection and it is a joy to behold. Anyway back to reality, I'm still working on this 5 inch gauge Chubb locomotive and this is a safety valve cover. There was nothing wrong with this, it just needed cleaning up, which I did. I'll show it in detail when I fit it back to the engine, but first I need to give the safety valves some attention. Like a lot of the things on this engine, the safety valves are very well made, and this is an unusual arrangement. The ball is captive in the carrier. In this clip I'm squirting some WD-40 down into the barrel of the safety valve, and fitting a new stainless steel spring as I put the parts back inside the body of the valve. In this clip I'm using a pair of circlip pliers to tighten the spring tensioning ring and then I always test it with a pair of pliers to make sure that I haven't tightened it too far and pushed the spring down onto the ball so hard that it can't move. So that's one down and one to go. This is the other safety valve, and this was very difficult to get apart because it was very rusty. Now that's odd. Safety valves should not be rusty. But this one was, and that really made it difficult to remove the spring adjusting ring. But eventually, with a bit of WD-40, coupled with a bit of time and patience, I finally managed to remove the adjusting ring from the body of the safety valve. And look at the state of the spring. The other one was rusty, but not as bad as this one. This spring is mainly rust, so I'm going to put that in the bin and make another one. There's a good selection of springs in a box at the steam workshop, so I selected the right kind of stainless steel spring and cut a couple of pieces to length, one for each safety valve. The usual health and safety warning here, never mess about with safety valves and always make sure that you use stainless steel springs, not ordinary steel springs which will rust away. It's now time to reassemble the internal components of the safety valve, pretty much in the same way that I've just shown with the first valve. And here I'm using the circlip pliers again to tighten the spring adjusting ring down into the body of the safety valve. These safety valves have numbers stamped on them. On one, the number 80 is stamped on it and on the other one, 85. And what do these numbers mean? Well, these numbers just tell me which safety valve is which. One safety valve will be set to blow off at 80 pounds per square inch, and the other one at 85 pounds per square inch. And that's why steam locomotives generally have two safety valves. Because two safety valves are necessary to evacuate all the excess pressure from the boiler. Most of the time just the first safety valve blows off, but then, if the pressure continues to rise, the other one comes into action. So as a general rule, you set the second safety valve to blow off slightly higher than the first one. Initially, I will set and calibrate these valves using compressed air before fitting them to the boiler. The next steam fitting to look at is the whistle valve. Like most things on this engine, it's very well made, but I'm going to pull it apart and have a look at it internally. A whistle valve is quite a simple device. Inside this body is a stainless steel ball that is held onto the seat and hopefully, in this case, with a stainless steel spring. When you move the handle, the handle depresses a push rod that just pushes the ball off the seat and lets the steam through to the whistle. The nut on the end of this valve was very tight, but finally, with the help of my barco spanner, I managed to remove it and here you see the components of the actual unit. The original spring was stainless steel, but I made a new one the spring that I'm showing currently is wrong in two ways. The end hasn't been ground square, and it's too small a diameter for the ball. And the solution was simple. I used a spring of the correct diameter, ground the end square, put the whole thing back together using some Loctite 542 on the nut, and the whistle valve is pressure tight. Here's some parts that I prepared earlier. I don't normally do this, but it's very tedious just watching me cleaning up parts. I didn't mind the whistle valve and the safety valves, they were fairly technical, but just to show me cleaning up parts on the polishing spindle would be far too tedious. 
This is the injector gun in the box and the safety valve followed by the whistle valve finally. And the handle's very springy and it feels good. I came across a slight problem when I was working on the water gauge. The seals in the water gauge top and bottom nuts are made out of rubber and this has perished and it's firmly stuck to the threads inside the nut. I didn't want to damage the threads on these special nuts by scraping them out with a sharp knife, so instead I heated the nuts to a temperature sufficient to burn off the rubber. And then all that came out of the nuts was just some black dust, which was very easy to remove. And then I cleaned up the nuts using the polishing spindle. These are the pair of boiler clack valves, one for the injector and one for the axle driven pump. These clack valves didn't need any attention at all really other than cosmetic cleaning, they work fine. The only part left to clean up apart from the piping is just the bottom part of the water gauge. I'll do that next week and hopefully by next week the paintwork will be ready so I should be able to put the parts like the running boards back on and the lubricator and start to get somewhere. So what have I achieved at the steam workshop this week? Well the engine runs quite well, I really am pleased with the way it runs and you can notch up the reversing lever almost back to centre, which is always a good sign, and it runs up and down the short length of track very smoothly. So until next week, from the Steam Workshop, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.